responsibility and God's blessing and God's judgment on nations. Now, actually I had a time this week, I'll, before I get further, um, where I was precepting a new nurse. She had actually graduated yet. She's in the middle of school. And, and she asked me how important it was for her first job, about where she would go and what she would do. How important is that first job? And I said, how old are you? She's 24. And how long do you plan to work? 65, 70, 75. I said, so you've got a 40 to 50 year career ahead of you. How important do you think your very first job is? Not very important. It's just your first job. Sure, it looks good on a resume, but when you consider the fact that you have 40 to 50 years to work in this career, you'll be changing your jobs a lot over that time frame. Your first one's not as important as you think. It's actually more important to think about, we talked about, how does your husband work? What kind of shift does he work? What kind of financial problems do you have? Life is bigger than your first job. And as we look at our bank accounts and the bills that come in and the family struggles that we have, it's easy to look at the here and now. As we're dealing with a recession here, since 2008, it's been bad. And we've been unemployed. There's been, we've had housing problems. All of us have lost money on our houses for the most part. We are not as well off. A lot of us are not as well off as we used to be. And we struggle. And it's easy to look at the here and now. And out of this, we've got our election year. And of course, we're right now between Memorial Day, when we remember our vets, and Independence Day, in an election year. So I want to bring your thoughts and your heart to someplace bigger than just presidential elections, because how you think will affect how you vote. How you think when you have the mind of Christ, it affects your outlook on government. And we've got Tea Party movements, and we were looking to elect people who have financial, political, and social prowess. We've got Obamacare trying to take care of the underinsured. There's lots of social programs. There are lots of political movements trying to make things better. And this is not new. Matter of fact, this has been going on for a long time. Back in 1991, James Carville put in Bill Clinton's office three primary points. One of them was the economy, stupid. Just keep your focus on the economy. It wasn't about morals. It wasn't about gun control. It wasn't about abortion. It wasn't about you name the political thing. At that time, it was about the economy. How what can we do to make the economy better? Do we think that sound domestic fiscal policy conservative or liberal international relations, the savvy navigation of global economy will save the day and restore jobs, create wealth, and resurrect the American economy? Do we think that there are political things that can happen that will make America better, that will get us out of our financial doldrums? Proverbs 14.34 says, Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a disgrace to any people. It's righteousness that exalts each of us individually, that brings our nation to a better place. 